Welcome to Pete Bonfrey Tells the Truth, where every Thursday at 11 a.m. Central, we expose the underbelly of the marketing industry, and I share my hard-earned knowledge so that you can make better marketing decisions and avoid wasting money on marketing boondoggles that just don't work. I'm your not-so-humble host, Pete Bonfrey. I've been called the Simon Cowell of marketing, the great gray curmudgeon of marketing, and I've been featured in Inc. Magazine, Forbes, and countless business journals and other publications. I've owned and operated a B2B marketing firm for 32 years, working with dozens of household name brands and many more up-and-coming and growing clients. So you can learn more about me uh, and my company at my LinkedIn profile or heading over to ClarityMarketingSupport.com. Check out our blog where you'll find a lot more wisdom. Uh, and you can also subscribe to my podcasts uh, at our channel on YouTube. And we'll give you those links down in the comments. So this is Pete Modfrey Tells the Truth. It's uh, every Thursday at 11, we jump on LinkedIn, and our goal here is try to uh, dispel a lot of the murkiness and the myth and the bullshit that marketing has become, the marketing industry in particular. And the reason for me and why I've been kind of talking about this topic, it's not just to you know, scream at the clouds, you know, which I also love doing. Um, it's that it's, it's a source of a, a lot of pain, misery, and wasted money and there's, you know, it's just, it's uh, the more you know, uh, the more, the better you can avoid being in that position. So I love having people on that, that share my passion for telling the truth and also for marketing that actually works. Um, so what's the name of the agency? Uh, so our agency's name is Dos Mundos Creative, which means two worlds in Spanish. Wow. Uh, kind of playing on the dichotomy of both uh, strategy and creative that's needed to to happen in a proper marketing plan <laughs> as we're gonna go into today. So we're getting a note here, getting a note. Kana is louder than me, so that's all right because I'd rather have you be loud and then I'll be, I'll be turn up mine a tad here and be a little louder and hopefully that sounds better. There's a 15 second delay to the chair next to me, which is really weird, uh, but uh, we're getting used to it uh, because it is every Thursday, 11 o'clock central. So, you know, when when you and I talked uh, just before the program and I, I think a couple days ago, I, I shot you this, this quote. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Uh, that's a friend of mine. Um, sent this to me, uh, this is probably a few years ago, and it reads, sales-oriented executives, including CEOs, live in a constant state of paranoia and anxiety that marketing is wasting the company's time and money. And then the second part, we'll talk maybe talk about these two issues separately, but the second part of that message is, marketers at all levels live in a constant state of paranoia and anxiety that their shit doesn't work and or the people product services they are supporting have unrealistic expectations and that's my friend Jason Stoddard in Austin, Texas. You can look him up. He's a very, very smart guy. And uh, when I got that, I, I was actually so taken aback by it. You know, not only that it matched my uh, my perceptions too, being in the industry for so long, but also that it, it's just so concise and kind of nails it. And so I actually printed it out and stuck it on the wall of my office where it has sat for about three years. And... Uh, now it has a purpose. Uh, so that first part, constant state of paranoia and anxiety that marketing is wasting the company's time and money. Do you think that's a thing? I think there, there's a lot of nuance to kind of that, that quote from your friend. Um, there's, there's this really weird, uh, I hate to use the word dichotomy again, but it's one of the most relevant uh, words, I think, especially in uh, our, our industry right now. Um, but the, the interesting thing is that a lot of times there are two types of salespeople, right? There are the salespeople that are, that are going in a little bit more with the, um, the hunting mentality and the, the, uh, like a little bit more of the ego. And there and there are the salespeople that are going in understanding that they are solving a problem and they are helping people. 
when you have the first type of salesperson, you are causing what you're describing in that quote with that paranoia among a marketing team because that expectations aren't being set properly. Um, a lot of times the salesperson may not actually know exactly what they're selling and what the capabilities of the company are. And with the marketing industry changing so much over the past two years, especially during the pandemic, uh, there are the, it's, it's a different game in a lot of the sectors. Uh, so it really comes down to setting proper expectations. And if that doesn't happen at the sales level, then it really creates this tension and this unease that you feel throughout a marketing corporation. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I think that I think they, that what exacerbates that is marketing's tendency to overpromise and to overhype uh, and and that sort of thing. I saw a marketer, and I can't remember where I saw it, but they described themselves as a hype machine, like that was a good thing. I, I was really confused by it, um, but I think I think that they. Well, I think there's two parts. You've got internal marketing teams and then external. And, and I think a lot of what we talk about in this program are external. And usually the sales function is within the company. And so there's a natural wall between those two anyway. Um, right. But when, when I think about external, I, you know, the, the problem manifests in terms of expectations is promising a lot to get the deal. Right. And I think that's where where you run into the issue. Uh, I, luckily, I do a lot of our sales in our company, so I'm able to say exactly what we are and are not able to do. Right. Um, and team comfortable with it. It's all about checking in with your team regularly, making sure that we feel comfortable with over-promising, under-deliver, or uh, <laughs> over, uh, yeah, Underpromising, yeah, over delivering. Over delivering. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, but, but what about you know? You have these various kinds of entities. It could be a freelancer. Right. It could be a consultant. It could be an agency. But they're really looking at their wallet, right? And they're like, sure. Uh, you know, and the, and the client is probably saying something like, "Look, man, we're going to try this for thirty days. Yeah. If we don't see revenue in thirty days. I mean, their sales cycle could be six months long, but they want yeah. revenue in thirty days. That salesperson." It's like you got two little little people on your shoulders. Sure. One's like, tell the truth, which is what we yeah. do here, uh, and what you should do. But in reality, what happens a lot of times is, uh, sure, yeah, we can right. uh, get you on the first page of Google there in about two days. You know, because wallet. Yeah. Uh, this maybe this guy's wallet, right? And this guy's like, legit. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and I think that's where that's where you and I align so well is that it's it's all about educating the client. Um, if you don't explain to a client why some some salesman's um, what is it ridiculous, I guess claims are are not practical. Like if you start to explain why uh, how the algorithm works, what the average results are across the industry. Uh, they'll start to understand that some of these claims are are not legitimate, right? Um, I hope so. But I mean, if the, if they're the right client, so uh, one of our things is we 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 really uh, don't take clients on that don't understand that don't understand or appreciate the the expertise that we're bringing to the table. So we're lucky to live in this right. kind of time right now where uh, agencies can pick their clients just like clients can pick their agencies. Uh, so it's all about finding the right fit and finding people who have the same rationale and reasoning that you do. Otherwise, and and holding that standard, setting setting the standard even, so that you don't run into the issue of having something that you can't uphold. But that's something that most agencies are still doing. And they're really hurting the industry as a whole. Well, yeah. And so there's a couple of things there that you that brought to mind when you, when you said that. And and one is is that, you know, not every deal is is a good deal, uh, for the agency or for the client. And that, you know, we also we talk about clients on this program as if they're one big monolithic block, and they're not. Right. You've got you've got cert, you know you've got a, a very wide range of of knowledge, from right. no idea. In fact, uh, let's see, there was this study that said uh, forty seven percent of respondents. This was by. Uh, Research International, 47% of the respondents to the survey have little or no idea of what marketing does. And 
you know, it's just reality. But, you know, if the agency or the consultant or the marketing person focuses on on whether first whether can they truly solve the problem or not uh right you know i have other criteria when it comes to being a match or not like do i like these people because if the answer is no then probably not a match but other yeah. things are you know what is their level of understanding um i need you to have some idea of reality when it comes to uh and when we say marketing usually what i'm talking about is driving demand that's kind of what b2b clients want from us think b2c clients everybody kind of wants the same thing it's supposed to be mm -hmm. supposed to be showing up in the uh, revenues at some point um and so you know the more agencies I, I think i think the word you use was you know discipline or at least i thought i heard it but the discipline Maybe. to say <laughs> no you know if yeah. it isn't a match and it's not a legitimate match um right. but if you're Look, I mean, if you're willing to compromise because you're broke, I mean, isn't that the American way? I mean, isn't it a fake it till you make it? Isn't that a thing? I mean, it is a thing that exists, but it's a thing that really hurts you in the long run, right? If you're if you're setting it for expectations, our industry runs so much on reputation that you see a lot of agencies go under after a bit because they are setting poor expectations and they're not delivering and then they are running they're running dry or they just continue to to make bad deals well, right but that's yeah, not a, a long thing the churn and burn model you know where exactly. it's like you know that you know that 500 bucks a month is not going to move right. that client anywhere but you need that right. 500 bucks a month maybe your sales manager's riding your ass or maybe it's just your own circumstance and you're and you're and you just hey look you know we'll string these guys along for a few months and we'll just work our asses off to replace mm -hmm. them and then we'll do that again and again and again i don't know if it's a conscious thing that that some places do or if it's just something that happens right but yeah it's that living hell for them and and you cannot right. last very long in the business mm -hmm. doing it but i, I don't no. think that's on their radar Right. I don't I don't think so either. And I think it's especially people who are who are newer to the industry who are trying who are basically buying into the um, you can you can be your own boss. Entrepreneurship is easy. You can uh, you can be traveling and living in Fiji and still running a successful business when the reality is that so much of it is still relationship based and you still have to be staying so tied to how the industry is evolving and changing that you can't be living in a bubble and yeah. the end creating something successful for the I long tell run. people that you know the difference is now you have 30 bosses so yeah. you know welcome exactly. and uh, time off isn't a thing um, yeah and i and taxes I've been are in a this, pain and taxes yeah and there's all this other stuff you you know this is actually important and I think I think people that are new to being to delivering a service uh, especially a, a a strategic type of service there's a whole separate set of skills that I know for me took at least a decade to even understand and that was how to how to deliver that domain expertise I know marketing how to deliver that and and deliver value is is like a separate skill set and mm -hmm. I think it takes a while to learn that. And again, if, if you're if you're looking at, you know, and so this is the practical tip, I think, is, you know, where this goes wrong is you have clients that don't really understand what they're buying. Um, mm -hmm. You have people that are have different motivations for being there. And some of it is very socially acceptable. Right. We're a hustle sure. society going to hustle. You know, gosh, clients hate getting hustled. I hate to tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but it's it this is how it happens and so the the it's a buyer beware situation right mm -hmm. and so one of the things that i look at how long have they been in business yeah absolutely right? been in business you know look at the person so we do competitive research here for our clients and so mm -hmm. it's the same thing we can do research there's nothing you can't hide anything from us um yeah. and uh one of the things we look at is the marketing the leader what is their background what is their mm -hmm. skill set um, yeah. And what you'll find really often, I mean, if they're bringing in an agency, things are probably not working, right? Yeah, um, exactly. And we find that they, the people just don't have a background in marketing. And now with LinkedIn, this makes it so handy. You can look at their job experiences and they go from some kind of coordinator or warehouse person. Uh, maybe they started with a degree in physical therapy and then, you know, one day they became a marketing thing. Sure. Like, and like that. 
And there are people, and the, uh, the thing is that there are so many people that do marketing that actually do have a lot of experience in it. But the challenge is that the industry is constantly evolving. I mean, we have sure. a whole team of experts that we work with that have very specific areas. Like we have a person who works in specifically trademark branding. We have people who work at specifically in building communities in influencer marketing, uh, just because I mean, if I tried to keep up with all that, I would lose my mind. Like the, all of the nuance of how to make it work and work really right. well, you'd lose your mind. Well, and no person at a company can do that. Well, right. And and I think that it allows you, though, to stay at a, a strategic level where, you know, I don't necessarily yeah. need to know a lot of that stuff. You know, my yeah. job is to is to the is to drive the, the overall big picture and the objective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. You know, what I what I tell people when you're looking at different, let's say you're shopping for an agency or you're interviewing agencies and, and really the mm -hmm. game there is to say, how do we lower our risk so that we don't choose the wrong horse? So right. look at how long they've been in business and then take a look at the people who will be working your account. I mean, ask them who's going to be on our account, you know, I mean, who's yeah. going to be working with us and then look at their background. And so mm -hmm. because what amazes me is this happens over and over again um, and and it's usually a 50-50 problem where the, the client sure. is 50% of the problem and the agency is the other 50%. And, and I'm not saying yeah. it's a malicious thing. I think I think it's just a, a travesty of misunderstandings usually. But, um, but there are ways that you can kind of see if you can mitigate your risk by the way that you kind of vet places, I guess. But that, those, to me, that's pretty obvious. And I just don't know why that doesn't happen. And so... I think it's a, it, it comes down to people um, oh. who save money. I think it's it's all about fear. If you uh, there, there's a great study done by Yale University. I think we talked about this earlier um, in our in our private conversation. How uh, when people are feel very comfortable and feel very supported, they are much more liberal and they think through their their process a lot more clearly. And when they are scared and they have a certain amount of fear they're very conservative with how they uh how they think like how open they are to new ideas how um and trying to just like look out for number one right risk adverse yeah, yeah very, there's, very there's risk a huge adverse. risk aversion yeah, yeah and, and so when we talk about state of paranoia and anxiety that marketing is wasting the company's time you know that's coming from that place of perception but it's also reinforced by them getting the same outcome over and over again. Right. But if you really get into that, they're doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So. But it's like people who date badly, right? It's like, it is. it's like somebody saying uh, in like, if you look at like, old school BS uh, cosmopolitan articles that were like, uh, why you date bad boys? You know, it's, you, you're looking at all these toxic traits and you're going for it over and over and over again. Uh, and I mean, people are looking at the wrong things. They're like, oh, this is a shiny object. I wanna, I wanna see what this looks like because it's attractive or because it made me laugh today or it was confident. When the reality is it's, you should be looking at the the overall optics of how that company operates. You should be looking at the statistics. You should be looking at um, the the personality of it uh, a little bit more. It's well, it's very much like dating. Yeah, and I think you know we're just so the viewers, if you're watching along, we're going to get to some solutions. I I think uh, you know here pretty quick, but I think I really yeah. wanted to get a good sense of you know this problem is so multifaceted, and sure. it's and it's really what it amounts to is. Uh, you know, I, th I think it's a Gartner study. I don't think it was the Research International. I think it was Gartner that said only 11% of marketers are happy with their outcomes. So that mm -hmm. means 89% aren't. And so that's why we're talking about it, because it's really unnecessary. Um, and, sure. you know, you're paranoid and, and you're anxious because you haven't experienced, you haven't yet done, I mean, I hate to say this, but done marketing right, which is, by the way, when I say right, I don't mean my way. Uh, yeah. There is kind of a way to do it, and there's sure. And, and if you skip that, you're going to have a really hard time. Yeah. Um, the second part of the quote was: "Marketers at all levels live in a constant state of paranoia and anxiety that their shit does not work, or the people, product, services they're supporting have unrealistic expectations." So we we touched mm -hmm. on the expectations; they're sky high. Um, sure. And but marketers are paranoid, and Jason says because they know there doesn't work. Um, 
No, I swear on the show. I just thought that would be yeah. more fun to ring the bell. I love um, it. And uh, it's not a children's show. It's it's an right. adult program. Um, every Thursday, by the way, I hear on LinkedIn at 11 o'clock central. You see how I got that in there like that? Perfect. I love Pretty it. good, huh? I love it. Um, so why are they paranoid and anxious? Um, you know, I, I think I think it's because their shit doesn't work. I think it, I think so, and I think it's because it, it really depends on again setting those expectations properly, and also making sure that you're that they're constantly being educated. I mean, uh, the people who are good in the industry know each other. Like you and I were introduced because we we have the same circles. Our friends tied us together. Uh, and it's just, if you have a good reputation, people know each other. And we have Absolutely. these side conversations about uh, what's working, what's not, and kind of doing an analysis of the market. Uh, we, I mean, we both do SWOT analysis for our clients. You more on the B2B side and us more on the B2C and D2C. Uh, but, you, but that's something that we do as thought leaders in the industry is we talk to each other and analyze where's the, where's the industry going, what's happening with uh, new releases in uh, different technologies, different changes that are coming, um, and kind of seeing what needs to happen. Whereas, whereas marketers that live in a bubble do live in a state of fear and paranoia because they're just trying to meet their unrealistic deadlines and they're not looking at the broader picture because well, it's, it's just a job, not a career. Right. They're, they're they're doing instead of thinking first, and it's yeah. and I think uh, and and you know and I appreciate that. I also have to say I appreciate my my following. I mean, you have a huge yeah. following. I've got a pretty good sized following. Um, boy, does, you know that's the, we can't exist without you. So uh, thanks. Um, but I think that the one of the things Thank that's you. really been going on is is marketing has become less of a strategic function and more of a tactical function. So what I mean by that yeah. is a company will say, hey, we need more revenue or some kind of big picture goal. And then they'll diagnose themselves and they'll say, we need a new website or mm -hmm. we need to do SEO. And in their mind, they're doing marketing. And then the right. companies that make money building websites and doing SEO are all too happy to take whatever it is they're handed, even if it's totally ridiculous and, and unrealistic, yeah. and just say yes to that and try to make it work and do their best, try right? to give them yeah. the old, uh, you know, uh, football try. But the, sure. the, the, re the reality is, and you hit right on it, is it's okay to do, to build that website if, if there's right. a, some kind of an, a strategic process and deliberate decision-making process that goes mm -hmm. into it. And it starts with why, which is a great book. Yeah. But the, re the why in this case would be, why do we think SEO is going to solve our problem? I just right. talked to a great big B2B company who said they had done a couple things. They tried SEO and they tried LinkedIn, whatever mm -hmm. that meant. I'm not sure about the LinkedIn yeah. one, whatever they tried. But... It was, it was like they internalized the whole idea that marketing is just inherently risky and you just try stuff until it works. Yeah. When in, in reality, what they might not even know about, and it's, the, it's our responsibility to, to let them know about it, is that you can absolutely, you don't have to guess. You can, there is a way of predictive modeling and planning. Everybody hates yep. that word plan, four letter word, plan. I love um, it. <laughs> right? But nobody wants to do it. So they, they kind of yeah. skip it. And now it's sort of become a lost art. But mm -hmm. in their minds, they were tr they were just, this is how it works, right? It's business right. is risky. But it's like, well, no. Do you do that with your finance sure. function? Do you do it with your, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you set up a factory floor, do you not know what the output per square foot is in eight sure. months from now? Uh, it's the same process, actually, for marketing. Um, right. And, you know, get in touch with either one of us if you want to see what that process looks like, because I know ours is the same. Right. It's well, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, well, it's it's a lot of it is that whole uh, shiny object syndrome. Right. Um, where a where someone hears about um uh, a new tactic that's that a friend that worked for a friend and maybe that friend's exaggerating maybe it's because of how their company is set up but um let's say seo was the thing that really changed their model um but they don't look into the nuances of why 
right? Uh, they're just looking at, oh, let's that's happening. Let's just let's just put our money towards that uh, yeah. because they are they because they are in this state of paranoia. Whereas companies that lay a proper plan, uh, you and I have both talked about how we do exploratory processes with our clients. And for us, it's a non-negotiable because if you don't understand the playing field and you don't lay the right, right foundation, you're going to be working in a state of paranoia. All of your marketing is not going to be Absolutely. near as effective uh, because you don't know the nuances of what's worked and what hasn't. I mean, somebody can have a great following um, and have decent engagement, but it's all like fire symbols and hearts uh, because yeah. they have a bunch of bots and the bots have screwed their algorithm. So the right. so social media channels may not actually, or the ones where they have that, that bot following, may not actually have much impact on their actual sales and ROI. Uh, right. So it's well, really looking at the logistics. It's if what we're talking about is gambling, right? Mm -hmm. And I would think most gamblers are probably fairly paranoid. You know, they sure. kind of douse it down with alcohol, uh, yeah. which, you know, that works too. Uh, but um, having a plan. So, I mean, you know, let's, I, th I think we've established that there's a pretty, it's a, it's, you know, we, we talk about yeah. it on the program all the time because it is a huge topic, yeah. but I always want to make sure we're leaving people with some, some answers and some right. things that they can do to navigate this a little bit better. And I, I would, I would say that one is if you're thinking in terms of doing marketing and that, and you're thinking of it as a, a series of projects or a mm -hmm. project, change your mindset so that you're thinking of it as a process. In fact, the process right. is, and here's why our processes are the same, it's the scientific method. I didn't mm -hmm. invent it, right? You, yeah. have, you have to set your benchmarks. You need to know where mm -hmm. you are now. You need to understand what's missing, where are the gaps, people, processes, and information. Yeah. And then you need to get that information. And another four-letter word, but it has more than four letters, but it's uh, research. Boy, everybody hates that one. Um, they just do, man. You just yeah. go and do, right? It's like, just take, we say, 10% yeah. of your marketing budget. Invest that in right. a deliberate process. We have the new business mm -hmm. uh, audit is, is the one level. And then there's um, the new business blueprint, which is sure. it goes all the way through to a tactical schedule. where we do, mm -hmm. we do assign the tactics, but what we don't do is guess. Right. That's where you're going wrong. Right. I mean, there's there is like A to B testing, but that's as far as you should be guessing. Uh, yeah, that's after you've gone through a process to get to the answer that is ninety five percent, ninety eight percent right. right. Uh, and you know, it does. And we'll give people a break. It does take some sure. experience and some to do this. I mean, I'm working on Absolutely. some workshops right now, and I'm trying to teach people my process, and I'm scratching yeah. my head like, but how would you do this if you didn't know anything about marketing? And right. we'll, we'll figure that out. But um, yeah. And then you can bring in and you need objectivity. This is why you and I have a job is because sure. we bring a level of experience and then a process that we mm -hmm. can just plug in. You know, you don't have to figure all this stuff out. It's been figured right. out. Peter Drucker started it. Uh, so it isn't yeah. new either. Um, but I think it got lost somewhere along the way. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Bring somebody in and trust them, vet them properly. How long yeah. have they been doing this? How long have not just been in business, but how long have they been involved in marketing and leadership marketing positions? That's right. a big deal. Um, I think is. I think ten years is a good number. I think I think ten is also like a better number across the board. I mean, so one of one of the issues that I think we're running into across the board, and what you see is this: um, there has been this great mentality of um, taking away the fear of failure over the past, I, I guess, 10 years, it's really become a impactful thing, especially through social media is just taking the risk, taking the chance. But the challenge is that a lot of people are forgetting the part about, uh, taking a mitigated risk, taking a mitigated chance so that you're right. not just basically jumping in feet first into a fire. Right. Um, if you right. like, don't be afraid to take the chances, but make sure that you're taking smart chances. Don't do, uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, slot machines versus uh, blackjack, right? There's just a little bit different odds there in terms of what you can win. Right. I mean, and you can't you can't get rid of the risk entirely. No. One, one of the things that I say is, you know, what marketing's job really is is to re is reducing risk. Okay, you're going right. to risk some amount of money and time, and and maybe you're going to risk everything. Yeah. And you need to get it right. Uh, and so 
you know, you're never going to get to zero, but if you're, if you're just throwing things on the wall to see what works, you're at a huge high level of risk and you can really yeah. get that as, as low as possible. But then, like you said, you start testing. And so now right. you've established what those metrics are. You know, metrics are another thing. Have, I see my sure. advice is have some, right? Everybody claims yeah. that they have metrics that they're tracking, but when we yeah. dig in and it's okay, don't be embarrassed. Um, yeah. You don't. You really don't. Sure. Um, or you're, or maybe you're measuring vanity metrics, and, right. and your marketing people are probably doing that to you because they don't want to be measured. Right. right. And so there's a lot going on there. So I'd say look at the experience, look at their job history. Also, are they ready to jump in? Are they bringing you a long proposal with how they're going to solve their problem after they've spent about an hour with you? Okay, that yeah. to me is a huge red flag. How would they know what you should do? Exactly. Because what I, they what work for somebody else doesn't mean that's going to work for you. Completely agree. And I mean, uh, so I taught a, a lecture at UT for my uh, my my friend uh, Professor Amanda Russell's uh, influencer marketing course, and it was all about uh, reading the optics of both brands and influencers you work with. But you can do it with any. Uh, any 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 agency you're working with, any uh, corporation, any um, any leadership position at those companies, um, just anybody you're working with, you can look at the optics and say, hey, looking at this, this doesn't add up. And maybe some people aren't paying as much attention to their online. I know there's a whole thing, especially in marketing, where it's like the cobbler's kids have no shoes. Like I don't keep up my I don't keep up up our our stuff as much as as we do with our clients, right? Because we we're reference we're referral based, so we don't really have to worry about it. But well, it's a matter of at least having the right system. Right? You know, we, you can tell we, went through, we went through, you know, we're a B2B agency. So we fit, you know, mm -hmm. we're very much like our clients. We sell services. Yeah. And we went through our own process, you know, right. but I have to admit it, we hadn't done that in a decade or more. Um, and, you know, I'll also admit that we're way faster sure. than our clients at it, by the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, it took yeah. a good three, four days of solid, you know, very intense work just to to do our yeah. own company. And so sure. we're a simple company. Most of our clients are much more complex. And so without some kind of framework, some type of approach, some deliberation, so mm -hmm. stop buying tactics. Um, mm -hmm. Just stop for a little bit. Don't, you know, some people get worried like they're doing SEO, for example. And mm -hmm. they're like, if we stop, we'll lose ground. N no, you won't. Right. I mean, it's it's an ongoing process, but you can step back. And then yeah. now you can look at all those different possibilities. I say there's all these mm -hmm. different levers, right? And there's a sure. zillion levers. Okay, so yeah. the planning process is to really figure out what are the objectives? What are we trying to do? Right. How do we tie it? Which lever to push? How much right. do we push it? And that is our mix. But that's just the start. We're going to yeah. then start doing that. And by measuring, we can start adjusting. And we're watching exactly. the key metrics. And they're just, it's an ever, ever evolving game. It's not a project. It never ends. It's right. just like you don't turn your finance function off when things get tough, right? Sure. Oh, we're letting go all the accountants and yeah, the CFO. Exactly. Yeah, they're gone. We're not doing yeah. the whole money thing anymore. So yeah. uh, maybe when things get better. Um, yeah. You know, I. Yeah, I love this topic, and um, you know, I think we could, we should probably talk more about it. And I'll try mm -hmm. to put in the post. Um, sure. Let's put a, We'll put together our our tips to choose the right horse. Sure. Like, how can you, you know, how can you get over your paranoia and anxiety without mm -hmm. drinking and Xanax? Yeah. Which don't do that. <laughs> don't do it together. Separate. No. But not sure. together. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a better way. And it's actually, I guess this is what, what really, you know, we talked about it, I think, right before the program. The reason it frustrates me is the answer is actually pretty simple. Yeah. It's not that hard. Uh, it just yeah. requires a little bit of discipline. And if you don't have it inside your organization, yeah. you can bring discipline from outside. Yeah. Well, I disagree. I think it is hard. So I think Tell it me. depends on kind of what you're looking at. Um, it, I mean, the, the basic principle is, is easy. It's like, make sure that you're actually doing a proper analysis, make sure that you're using data, uh, make sure that you're working with people who have experience uh, that 
that know what kind of situation you're getting into and are staying uh, on the cutting edge of the technology. Uh, but creating that strategy can be very nuanced because you also have to make sure that you're getting the right information from your clients, uh, that they have, that you have the right um, industry information, that you're not buying into the optics that the competitors are putting out there. Right. Or your there own is PR. Sure. Buying your own PR, you know. Exactly. Well, that's why you have a out. You, that's why people hire outside agencies is to give that outside insight and being able to listen to that and n understand that this is a partnership. It's not about one person looking to, uh, like, we're all here to make money. But at the same time, like, if we were here to just make money, we'd go work at another company because it's a lot less stress, right? Yes. <laughs> there's More a lot, money there's too, a lot less work. Yeah. Well, maybe, but it's like, there's a lot less uh, responsibility. We're here because we care. We give a shit. Like we right. want to be a partner. We want to help make sure that companies are successful and we're good at it. And that's why we're both in the industry. And we right? want to but, be measured. You know, exactly. that's another red flag. If they don't want to be measured, that's got to tell you something. Good marketers want to be measured. Okay. Exactly. So it's like, you know, um, I think there's so much here to unwrap. And I, I think this has been a great discussion. And uh, I need an energy drink, too. I need yeah, like it a, helps. You know, I just need to slam that stuff all yeah. day long. Um, yeah. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Clean. I'm just drinking it. I happen <laughs> okay, to be good, good at putting it towards the camera. Uh, Maybe. Who knows? Yes. Yeah, good job. No. <laughs> it's a natural ability. So your yeah. agency is primarily B2C. Tell us a little bit about yeah. what your ideal client looks like. Sure. And then so let's plan focus... to do this again. Yeah, I would love that. Uh, so we really focus more on the on the brand strategy integrated with marketing strategy side. Uh, we look at kind of holistically the messaging that people are putting out there uh, because the branding is where you build trust with your clients. It's where you build the personality. There's so many competitors out there. Uh, no matter what you're doing, you can't say there's no one else doing it or there's no one else going to do it because they are. They're working on it. You just may not know about them. Um, but there, so we're about building that that branding, that trust, that um, the creative that surrounds that, and then uh, making sure it ties into your long-term marketing strategy and making sure that it actually works together. So what we do is we will take that and help integrate it and uh, where necessary, like we'll execute uh, with certain parts of our team to make sure that like your, your newsletters go out, that your, your funnels are correct, that everything is working together and that it's operating and um, testing. Our, our focus is really on making sure that your, your marketing and branding um, produces ROI, uh, which, is, which makes Absolutely. us a little different than your traditional creative and strategy agency. We have all the people in the same house. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I think the, the objective of our ROI is different than yeah. the objective of building a website. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, Clarity Marketing Support, you know, we focus on the overarching marketing strategy, sure. new business development uh, planning strategy, mm -hmm. you know, and it encompasses some of those things. And we're primarily B2B. So I mm -hmm. think, you know, uh, one is uh, I think we can learn things from each other. We did an episode sure. once called What uh, B2B Can Learn from B2C. Um, nice. And so I learned something every time I talk to you. And so I really appreciate you coming on and um, we will schedule another one. And I hope that, you know, y'all out there will uh, join us every Thursday, 11 central time on LinkedIn on my profile under posts. We'll put a, a direct link in the uh, do. I don't think I need to put it in the post. It, they can just click on the post. But um, people sometimes ask, where can I see this podcast? Sure. Um, pretty soon we will be putting it out everywhere that fine podcasts are put out. But right now uh, it's on my LinkedIn profile. And so uh, I appreciate you joining us and we'll go out. We'll just stay on the line here um, and uh, more to come. Awesome. This, well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate good, it. This good fun. stuff. Let's see if we can uh, roll this uh, post roll without screwing it up. Oh, hey, there's the music. Signing off until next Thursday. Thanks, Perfect. Kana.
gotta turn this up. I think we're not being.